to get to my destination, it all began here, at the Pittsburgh International Airport. To begin my trip, I landed in a suburban area known as Cape Town, South Africa, along with a group of people. While I was in South Africa, I visited Castle of Good Hope and went to the Table Mountain. While I was there, I decided to visit the Castle of Good Hope, which was in Cape Town with my group, which was built between 1666 and 1679 by the Dutch East India Company. I wanted to go close to a beach and get away from the weather I'm used to in Pennsylvania, so I went to Camps Bay in the suburb of Cape Town, South Africa, and was established in 1713 with my travel group where I learned to surf. Since there wasn't too much time left in the day, I wanted to go to another attraction, so I went to Table Mountain in South Africa, which by surprise is a flat top mountain, and took an amazing aerial cable along with my exploring group. I left my group and went to Madagascar and visited Zahima National Park, which was established in 1997 and has 112 bird species, 46 reptile species, and 62 species of amphibians, and 48 species of mammals, and 13 species of lemurs. Next, I want to go to the Kalahari Desert, so next on my list, I went to the Kagawati Tram Tram Park. It had red dunes and scrub that fades into boundlessness, and broad groups of genbok, springbok, which come and go during the seasons. Since I've always wanted to go on an old-fashioned safari, I couldn't miss my chance. So on the next day, I headed north to Cahobi National Park in Botswana, which is the third largest park of the country after the Central Kalahari Game Reserve and the Gems Book National Park. It is also the country's first national park. While I was there, I saw nests, which are also called wild beasts, which are known to be alive about one million years ago, suggested by fossil records. I also saw zebras, which after looking at and researching, no zebra's coat is the same. There are also many elephants, and this park is surprisingly known for its spectacular population. There are other animals, such as the hippo, which actually, from my seeing, eat a lot of herbs. Who would have guessed that since they are so large? Another animal species I saw were sable, which are shockingly hunted for their fur, which is weird because they are very small. Lastly, I saw hyenas. These animals are behaviorally and morphologically similar to canines. Next on my list was Victoria Falls, since of course I was close to Zimbabwe and I definitely couldn't have missed it for the world. The falls flow differently than most do because it flows upward instead of downward. While I was there, I wanted an elephant back safari and whitewater rafting. But I almost took a dirty devil's pool, but was too scared, although I took a picture of people who did. On my next adventure, I kept traveling north to see the stunning African rainforest ecosystem. In order to get there, I had to travel up the Zambezi River, through Malawi, Tanzania, Burundi, and Rwanda until I finally got to Uganda to visit the Kaibao Forest National Park. This gorgeous park was established in 1993 and was built to protect a broad area of forest previously managed as a logged forest reserve. While I was there, I saw amazing rainforest wildlife and learned that the northern part is known as the wettest area and its average rainfall of about 1,700 millimeters. This park is named for one of the best support destinations in Africa, the Trenton Beach Trust. This rainforest is one of the last remaining trees in both lowland and mountainous forests. This forest is home to 325 species of birds, 4 wild felids, 13 species of primates, and at least 16 species of other mammals, and over 250 tree species. Talk about a big ecosystem. After I saw a lot of wildlife, I decided to see the urban life of Africa, so I headed east to visit Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. While I was there, I noticed a mix of wealth and poverty. Nairobi is very unfortunate people that live in some place, but it also has fortunate people who live there too. 
In the unfortunate parts, there are 4 million people living in the overcrowded urban slums. They are on a massive food crisis. Their government has declared a national food emergency. In normal circumstances, malnutrition, which is when you aren't eating the right stuff, is at least at 15% in specific areas which qualify as humanitarian emergency. Country director Anna Mahoney has been tirelessly talking to government and donors to try and get the crisis in Nairobi slums on the agenda, while in other parts of Nairobi it does not have it rough at all. On my adventure, I did something pretty radical. I continued east to Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia. This idea was foolish and dangerous, and even though I was warned against visiting, because there was a high threat from terrorism, including kidnapping, throughout Somalia, including Somaliland, although shocked the land went through with it. This area had only six months without terroristic groups, but then taken over once again. Since I am white, I am a target for crime and am regarded wealthy. While I was there, walking with my hired guard, I did see some attractions such as Shanghai Old City, which is known for its renowned beauty and architecture. Overall, Mogadish is a horrible place, but the Shanghai Old City was beautiful despite the damages of the ongoing civil war. To end my trip, I traveled far, far west to reach Timbuktu, which was founded in the 5th century and is a city in Mali. While I was there, I visited the priceless historical architecture, such as the Burger Mosque. This beautiful landmark was built in 1327 by Abu S. Hakwas Sahali and paid 200 kilograms of solid gold. Dijinguaba is one of three madrasas composing the University of Timbuktu. In 1990, this ancient mosque was considered to be in danger by the cause of sand enroachment. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end. My vacation sadly went too fast.